Well hello, my name's Louise Savage, an extremely warm welcome to my channel. Um, a very warm welcome if you're returning and an equally warm welcome if you are visiting for the very first time. Um, so I'm sat here in my library all snug and cosy, the wind is howling outside um, and I've been doing some reflecting recently on short stories because I was in an event a couple of weeks ago and um, I was asked a question, what short story would I recommend? Um, particularly short stories to engage um, teenagers because the person asking the question was very well aware that I'm a teacher. Um, so um, I put my thinking cap on and um, I think short stories are one of the most difficult forms to write. Um, even some of the writers who are my absolute favourite writers, I can read a short story collection and find that maybe there's one or two that I really enjoy and really sort of pack a punch. Um, but often I'm left a bit cold. Um, so I, I've sort of tried to um, think about stories that really, really um, might hook a reader and that you sort of left really awestruck or impressed or they've made you think or they've made you think differently about the world. Um, so, and also I must apologise because an awful lot of these stories I don't actually have physical copies of, um, or at least I've got, you know, really old um, photocopied versions or something like that. So I will, as I'm talking through, explain um, where you might get hold of these short stories. Most of them are available, most of the ones I've chosen, not all, but most of them uh, are available as PDF versions if you just Google online. Um, so yeah, apologies for that, but there's not an awful lot I could do about it. So the, first, the short story that I recommended, and I didn't have to even think about it when I was asked that question, was a short story that's in this fantastic collection here um, by Caris Davis. It's called The Redemption of Galen Pike. And um, Caris Davis, I think, for me, is the absolute master of the short story. I, I, I would even say, I mean, of the co contemporary short story, but also, I think, has honed it to perfection. Um, every single story contains surprises of some sort. They always make you think. You get into the action or the situation very, very quickly. Um, I think she's an absolute master of the genre. And there's a short story in here called The Quiet. And um, it's set in a very remote community. Um, it's a, basically there's a woman uh, on her own in her homestead um, and a neighbour comes to visit, but she doesn't hear him arrive. Uh, and suddenly he's there with his green pinprick eyes looking through the window. And the story unfolds in the most superb way because it really makes you question your prejudice. Um, whenever I've, I've read this story to a class, I've always got them to stop at a certain point and predict what they think's happened. And 90% of the class will predict the same thing, which I think is the thing that Karis is kind of hoping you're going to think. Um, and of course, that's not the thing that happens. Um, it's this sh sort of short story that I keep going back to and back to and back to. And every time I read it, I notice different things. The foreshadowing in it is absolutely superb. These little Hansel and Tre Gretel breadcrumbs of clues that are dropped all the way through the story. So you read it once and then you almost have to go back and read it again. Um, and that story leaps out at me. But every single story in this collection is equally good. Um, the Redemption of Galen Pike is a really wonderful story. There's a story in here called The Coat, which I absolutely adore. Uh, I could go on. So um, I can't commend Caris Davis's short story writing enough to you. She, 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 whenever I've, I've, I've been really luck, fortunate to be able to meet and talk and discuss stories with Caris on a couple of occasions. 
and she she comes out with these amazing statements about writing. One of them that I remember her saying is that every sentence must earn its presence on the page. You know, she really carefully crafts and crafts and crafts and, and ends up with these absolute gems. And um, I'm unashamedly going to show you, I think this was her first short story collection, um, Some New Ambush. And in here, there is a story called Homecoming. I'm just going to see if I can find it. I can't say very much about it because if I did, it would spoil it. But where is it? Oh, can't find it now. Um, I'm questioning whether it's actually in here. Yes, Homecoming 1909. It's on page 70. Let me see if I can show you. Um, here we go. So that is the entirety of the story. So it's it's only a page and a half. Um, and yet in that story, a whole world is transformed. Um, and I can't tell you anymore, but I just think she is a genius. I've really enjoyed her her novels as well. I think she's, well, I know she's got a new one out because I've managed to get a, a, a proof copy uh, coming out next year. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. Um, the first short story collection that I remember reading when I was younger that, that really had an impact on me was this one. I'm not a massive sci-fi fan or at least to say that I always think I'm not I just think I don't haven't read enough sci-fi I don't haven't I just think I haven't read enough sci-fi but this is Ray Bradbury's The Golden Apples of the Sun and this is one of the few books that I was introduced to at school I looked in the front and it says 1990 so I think I bought this copy because I'd left school I left school in 1984 I want to say um so obviously, I'd, you know, I'd left school a while, but I think I bought this because I was sentimental about the short story collection that we'd dipped into when I was at school. And these stories are amazing. They really, again, they're beautifully written. Um, they're very prescient in terms of, um, you know, what might happen in the future, because I think they were written in the 50s. Um, there's my favourite one in here is again extremely short. It's only a few pages long, but it's called the pedestrian. And this is the problem with short stories: you can't say too much because you know they they are short and you could give too much away. But I mean the the I love the um they're like woodcut um, engraving type illustrations in here, and um and basically it's just a man uh, walking at night. But it's in 2053, which, of course, would probably have been 100 years prior. Prior? No. 100 years into the future when Ray Bradbury wrote it. And actually, if you read this today with the emergence of AI and, you know, all our sort of cyber stuff that's going on, the story is really prescient and really, really chilling uh, and clever. And, you know, every single story in here, again, um, is is a story that I would go back to. Um, so I can't recommend that highly enough. Um, next up, this is a beautiful short story collection. It was actually put together by Amnesty International, the um, the charity that, that um, fights for uh, human rights and for freedom from torture. And um, as you can see, it says stories that speak for freedom. And again, you know, it's such a well thought through um, short story collection. And in it, there are stories by Elizabeth Laird, all sorts of really um, well-known writers, John Boyne, et cetera, et cetera. But the one that really, really stood out for me and that I've read over and over again is called um, A Suicide Bomber Sits in the Library by Jack uh, Gantos. Now, I, I haven't read anything else that Jack Gantos has written, but that story is absolutely beautiful. It, as it su suggests, it takes place in a library, but the punch is that it's about a little boy, a little boy sitting in the library, and you can imagine who he is, and the time is ticking, and it's just so clever. Uh, in terms of making you think about the decisions we make, the pressures we put ourselves under, what it means to be a terrorist, um, you know, the, the, the motivations behind it, um, the brainwashing, etc, etc. It's an absolutely 
brilliant, brilliant story. So there are the four um, physical books that I have with me that I can talk to you about, but I've also got um, a few others that I would really, really like to recommend. Um, another one is um, The Flowers by Alice Walker. Again, I'm pretty sure you can you can get that online. If you just Google The Flowers Alice Walker, it'll come up. Again, it's really, really short. It's about a, a little girl. She's 10 years old. She's called Myop. It's about, I think it's eight or nine paragraphs long. That's it. And again, by the end of the story, Myop's world has completely transformed. Um, it's a kind of rite of passage um, type story. Um, and it, it's, it's just a masterclass in how to move a character from one point to another. Very short distance she travels in the story. But by the time she reaches the end point... Uh, the final the final paragraph of the story is and the summer was over and it's about her you know awakening and um it really really packs a punch and i don't think i've spoiled it by telling you that um another one that springs to mind is a story called um hey you down there by harold rosseff i suspect a lot of you american viewers might have come across that when you were at school um but i think it's a wonderful um example of a story that makes the implausible really plausible and the thing i love about it is that um it's a story that gives you a really there's a, there's a really strong sense of injustice it's a it's a portrait of a relationship between a husband and wife and the husband is an absolute brute um, and you really, really want him you're, all the way through the story. You're wanting him to get his comeuppance and he gradually gets his behaviour gets worse and worse and worse. And like a lot of brutes, he's not a very bright man. And um, his wife appears to be incredibly weak and timid, um, but uh, she's also sharp and observant. Um, and this very, very surreal thing happens in the story. But... Um, you just completely go along with it because it's so beautifully written. The, the pen portraits at the beginning of the two characters are a masterclass in characterisation and how to establish a character, I think. Um, so I absolutely love that. And the final one I'm going to mention, um, and I, I God, what's the name of the writer? That's really awful. I've remembered it earlier and I can't remember his name. Uh, but again, you'll you'll find it. There are PDF versions of this online. It's called A Night in the Cottage. And um, I think one of the reasons that I was attracted to this story or found it in the first place is because it was it was written in the early 1900s and it's set in Worcestershire, which is actually where I work. I live in Shropshire, but very close to the Worcestershire border. Um, and it's about a man who's um, a bit down at heel. He's looking for somewhere to sleep. Uh, he's walking along the Worcestershire lanes on a very, very wet day and he sees this cottage and he goes inside and it's kind of, it's a ghost story, but it's not a ghost story. Um, and again, there's something that happens that seems on the surface of it really implausible, but the writer makes it very, very plausible. And I... Oh, what's his name? Richard Hughes. I think I think the writer's called Richard Hughes. Um, yeah, so I I would love it if you would share any short story gems that you have for me because it's an art form that I absolutely love. Um, I wouldn't like to think the hours that I've spent reading short stories that have, by the end of it I've gone. Mm. <laughs> um, all of the ones that I've recommended in my view, won't make you go huh, at the end. Um, you'll, you'll feel invigorated and you'll probably want to research more work by those authors. Um, so happy short story reading um, and let me know how you, um, yeah, if you've got any gems to share. Sorry, I don't know why. After all that energy, I've just gone a bit, hmm. Um, okay, anyway, um, speak to you all very, very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye.